Hello, anyone there? Have we got any watchers yet? There's one. Who's that? Is it you, Rosh? <clears throat> Say hello in the comments down there. I'll just wait for some more people to join us first. Hello, someone else. Hello, someone else. Can you just let me know if you can hear me all right? Just type a yes down there or a thumbs up or something. Have you got coffee? You'll need coffee. I've got coffee. And have you got questions? Questions is what we want. Hi, Claire. That's Claire and Michelle. Hello. Hello. How was your how was your Stratford buzz, Claire? Was it good? Hopefully some of your other people will join us. What time is it? Never know two. A couple more minutes and then we'll we'll kick off. I put out loads of um Oh, someone else. Hello, someone else. I wonder if everyone's had enough of it, Claire. What do you think? Everyone's had enough of social media generally. We've got three. Who's number three? Say hello, number three. Down there. Say hello. Wave. Tell me who you are. All oh, right. Hello, mate. You all right? Okay. Right. Oh, straight in the question. Thanks, Claire. Right. Okay. So uh, the best way to persuade people as to the value of using social media, <laughs> the uh, coronavirus crisis should um, should have done that on its own. <laughs> We've been telling people for years that it's the future. And um, yeah, now all of a sudden they uh, they, they kind of get it. Um, so yeah, something like this. Uh, with all of your uh, rest of your marketing fails, uh, social media is the uh, way forward. So yeah, what you need is a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone else. Hang on. What else we got? Right. Adding value as well. Adding value to online transactions. Well, I'm going to sort of cover that. I've got some notes. I've made some notes. So I'm going to run through those. Just going to wait for see if anyone else joins us, and then I'll they'll start off. I'm going to run through why, how, where, what to say, and um, we'll we'll take it from there. So right, should we? Yes, right. Let's crack on. Okay. Um, so um, you all know me, so I don't need to do the introduction bit. So that saved me a couple of minutes. Um, platform wise, so first thing with your social media is to decide what platforms you want to use. Okay. So there are many. There's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok. Oh, number someone else has joined. Hi, someone else who's joined. Um, so the first thing you need to do is to decide which platforms are right for your business. Okay, not every platform is right for every business. Um, some are better than others. There's no point selling cheese to chalk connoisseurs effectively. Okay, so let's join high number five. Um, so let's have a quick look at the platform. So it's all, it's all, it's all ramping up all of a sudden. Hi number five, we've got seven now, that's good. Um, right, the platform. So Facebook um, is primarily for um, consumers. So, you know, it's people like burgers and chicken and, and stuff. Um, it's where you're going to find like families and mums and dads and it's it's you you know what Facebook is like it's those sorts of people that you'll find there okay, so it's really good for um, B2C type business so, so you know selling people stuff effectively um, Twitter is slightly different it's a different crowd they're a bit more um, opinionated they want to have discussions and conversations you will find the consumer type people there but you'll also find more kind of businessy types there as well. That's that's where they sit. And it is a slightly different crowd to Facebook. They're a little bit more, um, what's the polite way of putting it? A little bit more mm, have things to say um, than cat pictures and holiday pictures. Oh, we're ramping up. And hello, new people who've joined. Do say hello down there, new people. Um, 
Instagram is very visual. I know everyone is kind of, oh, I must have Instagram, got to have it, it's part of that. You can, but if your product or your service isn't visual, is it the right platform for you? Um, we've dealt with a few different sorts of companies who have been insistent they must have it, but it's not really worked because they're not selling handbags or shoes or fast cars or holidays. Okay, so that's the sort of crowd that use that platform. Um, LinkedIn, most of you will know that's primarily business to business. So that's where you can sell yourself and your business and your services continuously and bore people to death with it. Um, Pinterest, it's a bit like Instagram. It's for crafters and interior designers and architects. And I don't, I don't really get it. I don't really get Pinterest. It's not one that you hear a lot. Um, so I kind of think that says quite a lot about it as a platform. Hi, Bill, Rachel, Stephen. Um, so yeah, it, it's a platform that people use, but I'm not convinced that it's one that's massive. I know lots of people use it, and it's but it's business value. Not sure. Um, Snapchat. Nobody uses that anymore. Nobody, literally nobody uses that anymore. So forget that. Um, and TikTok. TikTok is the new big one. Um, it's primarily for kids by kids and in terms of it actually having any value for your business not sure not sure still unconvinced it's relatively new so I'm sure it will mature over time but right now if you if you scroll through it spend a bit of time on TikTok scrolling through and you'll you'll get what I'm driving at it's lots of scantily clad teenagers so if you want that association with your business Good luck with that right now. It will probably mature, but right now I'm not, mm, not sure. Okay, so once you've decided on your platforms that are right for you, um, then you need to decide how you want to kind of be seen and thought about and understood. So what we call that is tone of voice. Now, most of you, I know Stephen, um, Stephen who's on here, he's um, someone I used to work over at Rally, which is really cool. Um, so he'll understand what I mean when I say tone of voice, but effectively what that is, it's how you want your audience to hear you and the tone in which you want to be heard. So if you want to come across as professional and very straight, then that's how you portray the language that you use. If you want to be kind of approachable and friendly and a bit of a laugh, you adjust the language accordingly. So that's purely what I mean by tone of voice. So once you've decided on your platforms, you need to decide on how you want to be kind of Understood. Do you want to be approachable? Do you want to be amusing? Do you want to be very professional? That's the sort of thing that you need to decide. And then the language that you use when you're doing your posts reflects reflects that. So that's your tone of voice. Um, so once you've decided on your tone of voice and your platforms, you need to decide on what you're going to put on it. So that's your content. Um, now, contrary to popular belief, social is not a platform for you to sell what you do. It isn't. It really isn't. Oh, I'm getting messages. Um, Social media started off as a big group of people having a chat and a discussion about stuff. Okay, that's how it started, and fundamentally, that's its core. That's its core reason to exist. Okay, now most businesses that we start working with originally have got that completely upside down. They continuously sell, 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 sell. sell sell keep selling sell so are you bored yet you are aren't you you're bored that's why so that's why you don't do it okay if your feed is a continuous stream of selling and adverts and product updates and company stuff people are just going to switch off they're just not interested in that okay so what you need to have is a mixture of content so the aim of social media is to build a community of people who want to or, or sorry who want to follow you and are interested in what you've got to say so you do that by talking about um, news items, trends, funny stuff, just whatever you feel like talking about. Okay, create discussion, ask questions, those sorts of things. Um, what else have we got here? Yeah, so you mix news, you mix company updates, and you mix in engaging stuff, ask questions. So in amongst all of that stuff, you can then put your company bits in. Okay, so. A nice mix for something like Twitter would be a news item in the morning, then smack them in the face of a company update at lunchtime, then in the afternoon put a cat picture or a video or ask them a question or something funny. Okay, that's a that's a nice mix. Think of yourselves as kind of like, 
I don't know, like the Daily Mail for your company, okay? Keep people interested, say interesting stuff, and then occasionally smack them in the face of a subscription update, okay? That's that. Um, engagement is is really key as well, okay? Um, I'm literally having a, a row with someone on LinkedIn at the moment about engagement, and he has dismissed it as a metric that doesn't matter. Don't care, it's all about reach. He's talking out of his arse frankly um, by engagement sort of the, the key things you want to do with your social are to inform entertain or engage okay that's the three that's the three things that you need to do so by informing you need to have um, I don't know news in your industry industry news industry thoughts industry stuff and obviously information about your company what you do who you are where you are what you can buy those kinds of things okay so that's one of the things that's informing entertaining um you know you're on social media you like cat pictures jokes videos music stupid quizzes okay entertain your audience find content that will entertain them keep them amused keep them in keep them scrolling on your feeds okay funny stuff trends video um and engaging, ooh, 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 I'm getting hugs, that's nice, I like hugs. Um, ask questions, okay? Ask your audience questions, that's the best way to get them to engage with you. Doesn't matter what you ask them, ask them what they have for dinner, you're gonna get some responses, okay? Try and keep it relevant, keep it interesting, but ask questions, that's a really great way to engage with your audience and get them, get them talking, okay? Um, things, depending on your business, you might wanna have an opinion about something, be a thought leader, Ask some thought leadership stuff. Ask big questions. Have big thoughts. Ask where will coronavirus end? How will we go back to work? Those sorts of thought leadership things are really key as well because they'll create discussion. You want to ask something that people want to think about and then watch the discussion happen underneath it and get involved with that. Okay, so that's a good way to engage. Um, and have opinions about stuff. Good for me. Good for me. I have lots of opinions about things all the time. Lots of opinions. Okay, and that works for me because to say something and have an opinion about it, not everyone's going to agree with you. They never will. And people will want to have their say and their their, their thoughts on that. So that's really cool. Uh, it's got a couple of questions here. Uh, let's have a look. Nick is talking to Neil. That's good. Okay, Dom is a top guy. Thanks, Neil. Okay, awesome. Do ask questions uh, down there in the in the comments ask questions and we'll I'll answer them as we go along okay so that's um that's engagement covered oh i've missed a bit i've missed a bit um something quite important right now is why social media right now why okay um well all of your other marketing's dried up okay and people are stuck at home with smartphones and they're scrolling through facebook and twitter and linkedin and the rest of it so now is the time really to get your business on social media and smack them around the face of it continuously okay smack smack like that um you've got pretty much a captive audience now we've been telling people for years that social media is the way forward years and all of a sudden when the world dries up they now get it okay so that's why you need to have social media social media gives you the ability to talk to your customers in a friendly and approachable manner it gives you the ability to answer their inquiries and obviously sell them stuff okay the, the likelihood is you're still working you can probably still facilitate their orders and social media gives the ability to do that okay it's easy it's in their pockets or on their laptops or on their tablets at home and it just gives you the ability to keep your business running the other thing is while the world has kind of dried up a bit if you don't tell people that you're still in business they ain't gonna know they're not going to go. But you can bet your life your competitors are going to be doing it and they'll be off over there spending the money elsewhere. So the more you talk to your customers, the ones that you had before the coronavirus took over, the more chance you're going to have of retaining them at the end of it. So use your social media to tell them that you're still there, you can still help, you can still deal with stuff and you can still sell them things. Okay? That's what it's for. That's why social media. So we can go back to where we are now. Um, the coronavirus is a funny one. It's <laughs> nothing like this has ever happened before. So you kind of have to be a little bit, a little bit sensitive to what's going on. Okay, so there are things that 
you should say, there are things that you shouldn't say, there are trends you should get involved in, and there are things you should avoid like a barge pole. So when you are creating content, just be a little bit sensitive about medical themes and death rates and funny stuff that might be taken in the wrong context at the moment. It's all right to talk about zombie apocalypses, for example, because that's amusing and it's kind of, but there's this, this sort of things you shouldn't be talking about. The other big one, really, um, and we're involved in this as uh, over there, I'm pointing, I'm good at pointing in reverse, over there. So Angry Britain is supporting the government at the moment in spreading factual information. Okay, we offered our services um, to them when they were asking for businesses to help and they've taken us up on the offer. And basically what we have now is access to um, the government's campaign database of all of their proper stuff around the coronavirus, so the factual stuff. Okay, so there's lots of misinformation being spread. So be really careful with your content if you do get involved in that, that you're not spreading stuff that isn't accurate. Okay, there are lots of places you can get your information from if you want to be involved. But generally speaking, anyone with a blue tick is a, or any organisation, so a blue tick is a good place to start. Um, Angry Britain um, will always have factual stuff pinned to the top of its um, pinned to the top of its profile. So if you want factual, accurate information to share on your own platforms, that's a that's a good place to start. But be really careful that you're not spreading stuff that's not right. Okay, that's that's quite important right now. Um, what else have we got? Um, tips. Have some just social media tips generally. Um, the big one is you're all working from home, so have the news on. Have the news on over there. Okay, have it on all day in the background. Have it on because something will pop up and you can go, oh, I can create a bit of content around that. And uh, that's what we do. That's pretty much how we run our business generally. And we look at what's going on. We look at what people are talking about. We'll watch this morning. We'll watch Jeremy Vine. We'll watch Good Morning Britain. All of that crap stuff that people watch during the day. But there's always something on there that will help you create content or discussion or a post or something something that will get people talking. So we do that a lot. So that's number one tip. You're at home anyway, have the telly on. Have the telly on, don't watch box sets though. We'd never do that. Um, basics, something that people forget a lot. Have the basics covered properly, okay? By basics, I mean your spelling and your grammar. And for a pound for every time we've seen a post from a business that's had a spelling mistake or a terrible grammar error or just looks horrible, just don't do it. There's no excuse. There's absolutely no excuse. And if you put crap out on your social media profiles, it looks crap and you look crap. So just make sure that the basics are right. Spelling, grammar, language, those three things. Okay? Basics. Um, hashtags. We always get asked about hashtags. Are they are they worth using? Should you have them? Um, yeah. Yeah. But they're not as good as they used to be because people use them far too much these days um, but they are a really good way of getting your content in front of the right audience but my tip is yes use them but use them sparingly um personality have a personality have a personality online you don't need to be boring no nope, you don't need to be boring at all let's have a look um what else have we got here um yes your social media is a very human communication tool it's not a flyer. It's not your website. It allows you to be you and be yourself and present your company in a personal manner. So by all means, have a personality. Say stuff. Tell jokes. Have opinions. Be yourself. It's fine. We do it. Works for me. Happy days. That's probably why Rochelle keeps asking me to do these. Uh, right. Effort. Effort. Your social media is not a magic bullet. And by that, I mean um, you need to put the effort in much like you do with everything else. You can't do one post a day, one post a week, and expect it to just work wonders. It won't. You need time and effort and thought. Okay? So, yes, it is almost a full-time job to do social media properly, but you've got the time. You're working with mine. You've got no excuse. Just get on with it. Do it. Okay? So, in terms of how many times you should post a day, we would recommend at least once to Facebook, at least once to LinkedIn, at least once to Instagram, and probably three or four or more times to Twitter because of the way Twitter moves. Okay, but ideally, you need to be posting to every platform every day. That's it, at a minimum, and that is a minimum, okay? If you want to do it more than that, fantastic. Two or three posts a day to Facebook, happy days. A couple of posts to LinkedIn, Instagram posts if you've got them to put out, but don't put rubbish out for the fun of it. 
but Twitter is a constant conversation. So the more you're involved in that, the better. Okay, because you'll put your content out and it's gone like that. Okay, so but it does require a huge amount of effort to do properly and do it well. And part of that is watching the news and knowing what's going on and having an opinion and to get involved. Okay, so effort, effort, effort. What else have we got? Um, right, ask people to share your stuff. You can, you can ask them. So if you belong to like groups like we do, like the CNC Club or um, uh, Claire's One, Biz Buzz Clubs, ask people to share your stuff. Okay, you've obviously got friends, family, business colleagues, and they're all in the same boat. All right, your family aren't going to mind if you ask them for a bit of help. They're not. So, oh, would you mind sharing my post, Mum? And she will do it. And although your mum might only have ten followers. The chances are in amongst her crowd there will be other business owners or people who are interested in what you do so ask your mum okay um business owners you'll find right now are very very supportive on social media because we're all in the same boat we're all aren't we we're all we are all a bit like that so ask other business owners to share your content they will chat with them talk to them now i've made some brilliant brilliant connections in the last few weeks absolutely brilliant um, but they're all really supportive, all really good. And, you know, you can share each other's content and get that little bit of extra reach. So sharing's sharing's caring right now. Uh, what else have we got? Let's have a look. Uh, right, something that I've um, um, got probably no right in, in telling you is not to argue with people publicly. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. But you can if you've got the right account. Okay, this one. Okay, this is fine for arguing with people. Your business is not. Okay, so if you get someone having a go at you, just ignore it. Just don't even acknowledge it. If it's a customer with a complaint or an inquiry, go publicly. Thanks very much. I'll deal with that and take it offline. Okay, take it DMs, get rid of it. But don't ever, ever argue with people online. And I know you probably want to, and I know it's really easy. Okay, but don't do it. Don't it. It's all right for me to do it. I could do it. You can't. You shouldn't. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, yeah, the thing is, it doesn't matter what you're putting out on your social media. It's not everybody's going to love you. Okay. They're just not. So, but that's okay. That's their problem, not yours. Deal with it. Deal with it and move on. Uh, what have we got else here on my tips? Money out of things to say. Uh, oh, yes. Your online reputation. Your social media is not a bit of a laugh. It kind of is, but it's also your online reputation. Um, it's part of your overall marketing strategy. It's part of your PR. And it's really important that you maintain your, your, you know, your level and your reputation because coming out the other side, you're going to need it. Okay. So don't get into unnecessary rows unnecessary conversations be careful what you're putting out it's all about reputation okay well how you present yourself on social media says a lot about you and your business so just just be careful okay care care is good um what else we've got we've got 23 done 23 minutes have we got any questions let's have a look oh oh there you go it's a good tip from neil uh, neil says use grammarly there you go is that, that's is that a site neil i'm guessing it is um, yeah, if your grammar's bad, there's plenty of resources online. Let's have a look. Um, Neil's asked also, how do you deal with toxic people? We've kind of covered that. Just ignore them, pretty much. The only time you should ever really engage is if it's a, say, like a, like a, like a complaint towards your business. If you get a little idiot popping out going, you're a wanker. Good, bad word. Um, ignore them. But if it's a complaint or it's an inquiry, Deal with it. So thanks very much. We'll deal with that. Just take it offline. Deal with it in DMs. Okay. No one needs to see your discussion. Nobody. But what people do need to see is that you as a business are responding and dealing with queries. Okay. That's the main thing. Um, let's have a look. CNC Club of Ars, do you have any advice for product-based brands right now with content? Um, yeah. I mean, as we've kind of said, it's all right to sell what you're doing and what you sell, but make sure that it fits in with stuff that's actually going to keep people amused and engaged and entertained so you know visual stuff is good though it's difficult to get out and do photo shoots but you can get your product in places to have it seen and you've obviously got stock imagery that you can use from before but around the content that you're using obviously bear in mind that people can't go out and they can't do stuff so you have to talk about the future and the end of lockdown and how you miss what used to happen so because you're in this kind of funny pause place at the moment is the future and is the past 
but you can still talk about your product in this bit that we're all stuck in here. Okay, what else have we got? Question wise, uh, da, da, da. let's have a look, scrolling through, scrolling through. Uh, da, da, da. Lots of people telling me they're connected. There you go, um, Claire said, lots of people are telling me they've connected with loads of people they wouldn't otherwise have talked to. Absolutely, because we're all at home, we're all stuck in and we can't go anywhere or do anything. So now is the time to make connections. And um, for businesses, LinkedIn's really good for that. You'll see lots of business owners talking about how they're being affected by the coronavirus and what they're doing and how they're managing the business. And if you get involved with those conversations, you're going to make some really good connections. You don't have to be spiky about it. You can offer your thoughts and your intelligence and your experience. What you'll generally find is a lot of people will start connecting with you. But all of the platforms are the same. Twitter is really good for that because it's a big conversation. So you can look for hashtags around your business, like engineering or retail or you know hospitality and start getting involved with in those conversations you might just find some really cool people and come out the other side those cool people might turn into clients or prospects or whatever but yeah that's a really good time to have conversations with people um do we have any more questions oh there you go uh, neil said grammarly is a plug-in for ms office and browser cheers neil it was really really good chap actually have a have a look out for him neil put your um Put your Twitter ID or your LinkedIn thing down in the comments so people can connect with you. He's a really good guy. He's um, he's a kind of ex-blogger. Come, um, I think he's at the kind of like entertainment recruitment or sorry, hospitality recruitment is what he does now. But he's a really, really good guy, really knowledgeable. Um, and, yeah, he's always got some good tips like that. So he's he's well worth a follow. Um, Stephen, um, what about stories? Worth it or not? not sure i'm not sure is not i'm i'm not convinced by stories um i don't really get it now, so if you're a celebrity and you're you've got you know you're off out doing something fabulous or you're sitting at home doing a workout or that kind of thing do you do you really watch stories not really flick through instagram you might have a look at one or two and then you get bored of the latest diet pill or diet shake i don't know that, that People rave about stories, but I'm I'm not convinced they're any better than a normal post, to be honest. And also with stories, they disappear in 24 hours. So you put a load of effort in and they just disappear. I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure, Stephen, to be honest. Yeah, give them a go. But I I having built Angry Britain to the the, the over there, I, don't, I can't I can't let this out. Yeah. Having built Angry Britain to the size it was, never done a story. Never bought an advert, never bought any content. And yeah, I don't know. It's just having the right content at the right time with the right opinion at the right time. And it just works. And it's not fancy pants. These Facebook lives are all quite new. I've done a few of these for a show now. These are quite good. Um, you might find more value in doing something like that, to be honest. Have a Facebook live session about your business or tips and tricks and whatever. Do something like that instead. It's a lot more, it's a lot more engaging. You can actually see who's watching you and answer questions with people. Perhaps, perhaps have a go at that instead. Something new. There's lots of different things you can try. I mean, to be fair, now is the time to try it. Literally, you've got nothing else to do. Just try it all. See what works for you. Some stuff might work better than others. You might find the stories will work for you. If they're doing great, do them. There's no rules. Um, Stephen says, do stories help engagement with normal posts? Again, it's. <laughs> It's hard to tell how the platforms themselves judge the content. Okay, we because the, the goalposts are constantly moving. Um, too many hashtags can downrank you. Sending links off site can downrank you. You know, it, it, there's so many different things you have to think about. So try not to worry about algorithms too much. Just do what you want to do. The, the main thing is having your your content being engaging enough to do the job on its own. OK, by all means, you can boost it if you want to. But a single really good post at the right time will get you a massive response. And that is the key to social media. It's timing. It's all about time. It's a bit like 10 jokes. OK, if there's a story that's breaking or something that you can add value to, if you smack someone in the face of a piece of content at the right time, you will see organic engagement and it will just go and go and go. You'll get likes, shares, all that sort of stuff. Um, things like, um, let's say Captain Tom. God bless him, Captain Tom. We sent a post out um, just as he hit uh, his 100th birthday. I know as he hit his 100th walk, we sent a post out for a client. It went absolutely mental. And it was a simple, 
congratulations, Captain Tom. Simple as that. Simple post, and it went loopy. Absolutely loopy for them. Brilliant. Right time, right place, right bit of content. Fantastic. Um, that's kind of the um, part of the thing we're using trends as well. Obviously, trending topics are massive. Yesterday was Star Wars Day. It's another great day for content. So look for those trends. If you can jump on those trends at the right time, they'll get you big results as well. So, you know, stuff like Monday Motivation, Wednesday Wisdom, Throwback Thursday, Friday Feeling, Star Wars Day, National Pie Day. Look for opportunities like that to tie those trends into your into your business and what you're all about. And if you can hit it just right, you'll get a good result. So organic content. So for me, it's all about organic content. I don't... <sighs> I've never been a fan of buying stuff. When we work with clients, we try not to spend their money. Okay, they pay for what we do, obviously, but we try not to get them to then spend 50, 100, 250 quid on boosts. It's just, if you're doing social right and doing it properly, shouldn't they spend any money? You shouldn't. I haven't, never in 10 years. Blue tick, 40,000 followers. Works for me. Um, so there you go. Um, that's that. Have we got any more questions? Let's have a look. Uh, there you go. Neil's put his uh, Neil's put his links over there. So yeah, follow Neil. So I'm gonna. Uh, we've only got sort of eight minutes left. So let's have some questions. Please ask questions. Stick them down there, and I'll answer them. Otherwise, um, I'm just gonna sit here and drink coffee. Um, so let's talk about me. My favorite subject, let's talk about me. Um, so I started Angry Britain in 2008. Yeah, 12 years ago, 12 years ago. So it started off as a, a website um, and within about three months of starting it, um, it got picked up by, ooh, ooh someone's trying to move me. Ooh, no, I, can't talk, I can't talk to you now, no, 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 I can't talk to you now. Someone's trying to ring me. Um, so it's been going for 12 years. Um, it started off as a website. It's still got a website, we don't really use it anymore. It's just a, it's just a page now. And it kind of translated into social media. Um, so we're on Facebook, uh, we're on Twitter, we're on uh, Instagram, and we've got a YouTube channel as well that we're building slowly. But basically, it's a place for you to come and get stuff off your chest. Have a rant about whatever's upset you. So it's at Angry Britain on Twitter and across social media there. Um, so what happened is after two or three years of doing that, um, I started to get approached by uh, businesses asking for help with their social media. And that's pretty much how Love Social Co came about. We've got so much of that work that we have to set up a business. Oh, we've got questions now. There we go. Right, Stephen, uh, what's the best type of content to share on LinkedIn to get engagement? Ha! Ha! I wish I knew that. Who knows? Literally, who knows what to put on LinkedIn? Um, LinkedIn is no different to any others. It's it's thought leadership. It's the right content at the right time. LinkedIn's a really funny one. You can say something that you think is absolutely earth shatteringly important and interesting and informative and you'll get no response. You can put some absolute guff on LinkedIn, it'll go mad. I, I have literally no idea what the winning formula is for LinkedIn. Although, that said, when we've been doing, we've been doing quite a lot of video work for clients at the moment, and that seems to get quite a good response, generally speaking. Um, you don't have to have a camera crew, you've got a smartphone, use that. Okay, so do short videos, no longer than a minute, just say something interesting, informative, engaging, using those three things and you should get a reasonable response. Video tends to work really well. I don't know whether that's um, LinkedIn being, um, or looking for video and letting that loose, or whether it's just, that's how it is. But video, generally speaking, is a really good way to get engagement on LinkedIn. Otherwise, <laughs> I haven't got a clue. So just try all sorts of things, see what works. Some stuff will work, some stuff won't, but just give it a go, that's the main thing. Um, Claire says, how much content do you schedule in advance? That much? That much, none of it, none of it. If you're doing social properly and doing it well, it should all be done in real time, okay? There are obviously gonna be occasions where you need to schedule stuff, but make sure that the stuff that you schedule is as bland as beige paint, because you may very well end up with yourself in a lot of trouble if you schedule something that's a bit interesting or thought provoking. And the trouble is you can schedule a piece of content in the morning to go out at five o'clock in the afternoon, but in the intervening eight hours, a lot can happen. I refer you to things like uh, the uh, Twin Towers and the Grenfell Tower and terrorist attacks. Okay, If you've put a piece of content out to go out eight hours after you schedule it and something happens in that eight hours that points to that and makes you look like an idiot, you're going to be very sorry. So that's why you shouldn't really do it. Okay, and If you do do it, do it in 
you know, do it, make it bland, make it boring, make it not really interesting, make it a company advert. That's the time. Schedule company adverts. You can't really go too far wrong with that. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Dom, how to get job vacancy services in front of the right candidates client without being boosted. Um, video. Video, Neil, is the way I, I think you should do that, mate. Um, I've been working with recruitment consultants and for some reason they are completely resistant to doing videos of your job ads. Okay. Sit in front of a background that's boring and just do the job. Let them see you. Talk to them about the job. Short video, 30 minutes, second, send it out, done. Okay, we contact details on. Give that a go. I, I'm telling you now that is a winning formula for recruitment consultants. Absolutely 100% short videos with the instead of a job ad on a card, talk about it, send it out. Okay, thumbs up. Say, any more questions? We are running out of time rapidly, We've got about three minutes left. Questions down there. Anyone? Anyone? Questions? Mm -hmm. I've literally got nothing else to say. Come on, people. Let's have questions. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Um, Rochelle, um, Rochelle, who's organized this. Thanks, Rochelle. It, this has been, uh, it's been really good. Um, she is a, uh, a top draw PR and marketing um, lady. Um, CNC Club is part of that. I think it's like a, it's like a sort of, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a sort of a consultancy for your business type thing. So go and have a look at that. Check that out. That's up there. No, oh, there. That's it. Up there. And check that out. Give those guys a follow. Um, talk to Rochelle. Follow her on uh, LinkedIn as well. She is hilarious. Rochelle, put your um, put your details down there. Oh, I'm not really good at this backward pointy thing. Um, and then people can follow you. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty much that's it. Um, get stuck in okay use this opportunity of a bit of time and space to have a go at your social media if you're not doing it already just have a go just get on with it don't put it off get your page up and running just do it have a go see how you get on you might find that actually come out the other side of it your social becomes a big part of your marketing and i hope it does because it works for us it works for all of our clients and it should really be working for you it's it's uh, it's the future it really is and now more than ever People believe us when, we've, when, we're, when we're telling them it's the future. Okay, so that's pretty much it from me. Um, follow me on Twitter at Angry Britain and Love Social Co for the business stuff. And uh, this has been uh, awesome fun. See you later, guys.